Hello, ladies, gents, and my non-binary friends, and welcome to another mini painting video. In this video, I paint a Nightwalker, which is a type of nightshade, uh, a sentient undead monster from the Shadowfell, also known as the Plane of Shadow. It is unnatural and malicious, and it takes great delight in the corruption and suffering of others. It is a creature of both death and shadows and has enormous powers over darkness. Uh, it is perhaps a little early in the video for a rabbit hole, but this is my video and I'm gonna take you down one anyways. So, while researching the Nightwalker, I became very interested in the Shadowfell, uh, partially because of this research and also because I played Baldur's Gate 3. Um, so, the Shadow Fell, according to the Great Wheel cosmology, surrounds the Prime Material Plane alongside the Feywild, which is then surrounded by the Border Ethereal and the Elemental Planes, all of which make up the Inner Planes. The Shadow Fell and the Feywild are close enough to the prime material plane to actually overlap and interact, meaning you could in fact run into this monstrosity while on a stroll through some spooky, misty woods. Uh, therefore, I recommend that you not go on strolls through spooky woods, or even nice woods because the Feywild, also not such a great place for people, uh, mostly they're mischievous, but not pure evil like what you can find in the Shadowfell. Uh, so stay away from the woods like every other sensible human being, just stay inside. It's nice, we have air conditioning. Uh, in later and revised versions of the Great Wheel cosmology, such as the one following the second sundering, the Shadowfell is considered a parallel plane or an echo of the Prime Material Plane, coexisting with it alongside the Feywild. The Shadowfell exists as a sort of echo, uh, using the word again, of the Feywild, though unlike the Feywild, it is a bleak and desolate place full of decay and death. The most striking and immediate impression a visitor to the Shadowfell experiences is the lack of color and light. There is no sun, moon, or stars. There is only an inky black sky, and all things look as if the color has been leached out, leaving nothing but black and white, which, without the sun, stars, and moon, it is more like shades of gray black and darker black. Uh, so my painting here is pretty inaccurate. There wouldn't actually be any blue, but painting black is... painting black on top of black is perhaps a little boring to watch and do. So I painted blue on top of blue on top of blue. It's my favorite color, so I can do what I want. Um, Additionally, it did make creating the base uh, a little bit difficult because I like to make interesting bases and when you can't really have any color in your base, how do you- <laughs> oh my god, I'm focusing way too much on the crotch. Uh, anyways, um, when you can't use any color on your base, it's a little bit more difficult to make it interesting, but I ended up going with a lot of texture, as you'll see uh, much later in the video. Uh, back to the Shadowfell. A light source in the Shadowfell only illuminates half the distance it normally would. Uh, conversely, light is actually visible from a much greater distance. Uh, this is likely due to how barren the landscape is and how few sources of light there are. Additionally, 
flames and fires put out less heat. Uh, and as a result of this, all spells that deal with fire or light uh, are significantly less predictable and prone to failure, whereas shadow spells are enhanced. So if you're a dungeon master or maybe a player who is tired of wizards always casting fireball and tired of getting trapped in the fireball, whatever, uh, maybe try and get into the plane of shadow and make that wizard be a little more creative with their turn. Some areas in the Shadowfell have an affinity with the negative energy plane and life-draining undead, such as shadows, ghosts, and vampires. These dark lands, as they're called, have a minor negative dominant trait and unprotected visitors immediately feel the life force being sucked from their bodies. And unless they exit the dark land quickly, all that is left of them is a pile of ash. Only someone with protection from negative energy could stop and admire the utter desolation in an otherwise forlorn landscape, though I don't really know why they would want to. Other less dangerous but quite unsettling uh, things, uh, echoes occur in areas analogous to towns and cities found in the prime material plane. They are, of course, nothing more than mirages of familiar faces and places seen through the macabre mi mirror of the Shadowfell. Air, water, and food exist in this plane, allowing for the support of plants, animals, and even some humanoids that have managed to adapt to the shadow environment. Uh, so, as a visitor, you can survive indefinitely if you are willing to endure the thick, foul-smelling water, uh, food that oozes dark blood, and a constant cold. Additionally, you would never be able to feel warm. You'd often hear or sense the presence of things that aren't there, and you won't be able to shake the feeling of being watched. So basically, it is a horrible nightmare and I don't recommend it. Over time, exposure to the Shadowfell alters living things, increasing various traits and abilities but also some vulnerabilities. And over a long enough period of time, you will even lose the ability to experience emotions, causing your life to become as gray and bleak as the land around you. In remote corners of the Shadowfell, there are dimmy planes created by the dark powers, which served as prisons to trap creatures of extreme evil to serve as sustenance. The dark powers are an unknown mystical force with the ability to pull complete regions into the Shadowfell, as well as corrupt many individuals. These dark powers can grant individuals with great and terrible gifts, all of which come at a cost. One such power is immortality and great magical possession. The dark powers can even tailor a domain of dread for each individual they pull into the mists. One such demiplane is the Valley of Barovia, which is ruled by Strahd von Zarovich, who is himself a prisoner of the dark powers. And, okay, rabbit hole over. Back to Nightwalkers. So, Nightwalkers are a CR20 creature. Uh, and as a result, they have all sorts of resistances, immunities, and abilities. Their damage resistances 
include acid, cold, fire, lightning, thunder, bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing from non-magical attacks. Uh, their damage immunities are necrotic and poison. And then they have condition immunities, which are exhaustion, frightened, grappled, paralyzed, petrified, poisoned, prone, and restrained. I'm not really sure what other conditions there are, now that I think about it. Uh, anyways, their senses. They have dark vision, up to 120 feet, and a passive perception of 9, so at least you may be able to sneak past them. They don't technically speak any language, uh, but they use telepathy, so I suppose they also do speak every language. Um, their traits. Uh, they have an annihilating aura, so any creature that starts its turn within 30 feet of the Nightwalker must succeed on a DC 21 constitution saving throw or take 4d6 necrotic damage and grant the Nightwalker advantage on attack rolls against it until the start of the creature's next turn. Undead are immune to this aura. Life Eater, a creature reduced to zero hit points from damage dealt by the Nightwalker, dies and can't be revived by any means short of a wish spell. So it's even worse than uh, getting killed by Disintegrate. All right, uh, their actions. They have a multi-attack. Uh, the Nightwalker will use Innervating Focus twice, or it can use Innervating Focus and Finger of Doom if available. So, Innervating Focus is a melee weapon attack with a reach of 15 feet, and it has one target. Uh, on hit, it deals 5d8 plus 6 necrotic damage. And the target must then succeed on a DC 21 constitution saving throw, or its hit point maximum is reduced by an amount equal to the necrotic damage taken. This reduction lasts until the target finishes a long rest. Finger of Doom. Oh! I don't know why I'm always surprised when she pops up, because I, I spent a long time editing this. Uh, that kitten is becoming more and more of a criminal as time goes by. Like, I thought that she had maxed out when she was tiny, but now that she's bigger, she wants to play even more often. In fact, before recording this audio, I had to play with her on and off for half an hour to get her to settle down and fall asleep. But if I were to look directly at her right now, she would wake up and start meowing at me to play with her. Uh, but I still love her though. She's so sweet. Always sits next to me and always loves attention. So back to the finger of doom. Uh, the night walker points at one creature it can see within 300 feet of it. The target must succeed on a DC 21 wisdom saving throw or take 4d12 necrotic damage and become frightened until the end of the Nightwalker's next turn. While frightened in this way, the creature is also paralyzed. If a target's saving throw is successful, the target is immune to the Nightwalker's finger of doom for the next 24 hours. Now, since the Nightwalker's lower regions are the same as a kin doll, they can't reproduce the fun way. So instead, uh, they are actually created. Uh, they are the shades of extremely strong-willed and evil mortals 
whose ancient and unyielding will and malice allow them to hold their corporeal shape. A Nightwalker's body, as you can see, looks as if it was made of shadow, with a vaguely humanoid, vaguely kin-esque form. They are around 20 feet tall, and their bodies are smooth and hairless. Some scholars state that Nightwalkers actually originate from the negative energy plane. Whenever an unworthy being attempts to tap into the negative energy plane, there is a chance they will simply be killed outright or be sucked within and replaced with a Nightwalker. The number of Nightwalkers in the Shadowfell can be attributed to the connection between it and the negative energy plane. Nightwalkers are capable of transforming humans they kill into Bodaks. Through the use of an arcane ritual that warps the void energies of the Shadowfell, this ritual does not work on any other plane. Uh, and real quick, Bodaks are what is left of a humanoid that has been destroyed by the touch of pure evil, such as a Nightwalker. They are undead creatures devoid of personality or souls. And with that, I think I've run out of things to say about Nightwalkers. This model and this research was a lot of fun to make and do. I hope you enjoyed watching me paint its crotch and cheeks in exhausting detail, which I ended up staring at for hours probably, if you count all the time I spent painting and editing. Um, Please like, subscribe, and if you're still here, have a fantastic day. Bye.